Hello Angels and welcome to another YouTube tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about animation. Animation. So animation is uh, allows us to create much more complex, um, we like call it sequences. Like remember when we did transition? The transition just allowed us to move from one state to another. So if we want to have like multiple states doing different things at different point in um, at a different point in time then animation comes into play obviously if you've watched cartoons and um uh, yeah if you've watched cartoons 2d cartoons yeah we call it animation so essentially it's like moving one thing from one stick to the other or if you remember growing up most of us did this um, stick man at the edge of our books then we're flipping the pages to create motion so essentially that's what we're going to be achieving <coughs> excuse me that's what we're going to be achieving with um, CSS. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump into it. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a simple box using D and then would we'll manipulate the properties of that as we go on. So this is a D. Let me create a external style sheet. Um, a new file so I'll just call this animation dot CSS so um, body the background color see if it works to refresh yeah so that's connected now I'm going to give this box a just give it the, I'm going to give it a height a width and I will give it a border that's what I'm going to do so, so let's just say D since it's just one D that we're working with so height is okay let's let me just yeah, what well, does matter? Um, let's see, 100 pixels. Width is, sorry. Um, 100 pixels. Border is going to be 1 pixel solid. Black. All right, okay, let me make that box big. Uh, uh, let me zoom in instead. Okay, I'm zooming in. But I could also still make bigger just okay so now so to start with our uh, animation the first thing we want to do is we're going to give this div an animation name an animation name um we're going to call this this hmm, angels okay and we need to also give it a duration so how long do we want this animation to take place do we want it to be five seconds do we want it to be 10 seconds um, so we're going to say animation oops no animation duration now if i do four s this means four seconds so just because I want this animation to let's make it, let's make it three seconds so it's not so slow. Now the next thing that is important for us to create that animation is called keyframes. So if you um, animations generally two D animations are I think even three D I'm not too sure but two D animations animations are generally created in frames. So you draw one part that's one frame you move it a bit, draw the second set of movements and keep doing it like that. So that they are in frames essentially. So I could say add keyframes and then you come here, they start with from, you say from. From is the beginning of your animation. What do you want to start with? Or what do you want to start animating with? 
So let's say we want a background color to start with aqua, then we say two, two, and then you say background color to move to red. So now when we refresh, uh, what happened? Oh, sorry, we forgot to put the, after the keyframes, make sure you put the animation name, the angels. Okay, so yeah, so make sure you put the animation name. So the animation name, so that these keyframes would apply to the property, to this div, essentially. All right, now when we refresh, you could see that it moved from aqua to red, and then it went away, right? So we're well, great if you wanted to stay, we're going to work on that much, much later. Okay. Now we could also decide to animate other properties here. So let's, I want to, let me make it rotate by, um, let's say 180 degrees. So let's bring in um, transform. Let me see if we see it. Let me see if 180 degrees. And yeah. Transform, rotate. So, oh no, sorry. We're going to start with zero degrees, sorry. Then it's going to rotate to 180 degrees, yes. <laughs> All right. So, same thing. Okay, let me. Okay, doesn't matter. See? And it stops. Now, if you want this to happen multiple times, let's say two times, you want it to rotate two times, then we give it what is called the iteration count. So we say animation iteration count. So I'm going to say three. So this it means that the box would rotate. 180 degrees three times. One, two, three. You see, that iteration count. Obviously, if you want it to move forever, you have infinite. So let's do that again. So it'll just keep spinning and spinning. Yeah, and it just keep doing that till eternity. So I'm just going to put it to two so that we don't have something. Oops, oops, oops. See, fresh and okay. So that's the iteration count. The next thing we want to learn is animation direction. The animation direction. Now, uh, animation direction so now you can see we have alternate alternate reverse we have normal so normal is forward is it's, it's the way we've been seeing it before so if we do it like this it looks like nothing has changed because you know it's going forward however there is another one it's called reverse so this okay so reverse refresh and you see what happens so you can see now it's starting from red and ending with aqua. Starting from red, ending with aqua. And instead of it to move clockwise, it's moving at clockwise. So that's for reverse, you know. Then we could have alternate. So reverse. And so let's do alternate. So we want to do alternate. So you want to alternate just as it's name in place. Okay, so first time it goes forward, next time it goes backwards, and stop. So that's for, for you want it to alternate. So the other one, you want it to go in reverse order. This one, you want it to go up. So for the alternate, it goes forward first, then it goes backward. Then there's alternate reverse. So, so it goes backwards first, and then comes forward. And then again. So that's for animation direction. That's for animation direction. Now there is animation timing function. So 
animation timing function now uh, there, there are different types there's ease ease in ease in out ease out linear whatever so if we start with me linear so linear is that it has the same speed from beginning to the end of the animation it has the same speed from the beginning to the end of the animation so if we save that but yeah it looks like But if we use ease, ease means that it would start a bit slow, then fast, then end slowly. So you may not really notice it. See, it moves fast, then end slowly. Okay, so let's do. Let me repeat. Should I get so slow, fast, fast, slow down? So that's for that's for ease. So there's easing. Easing means that you want it to start with a slow animation. If it is ease out, it means that it would it is ease in. <coughs> sorry, ease in like it says. Ease it in. Make make it start slowly. Ease out is make it end slowly. <clears throat> and there are others like there's another one called the cubic cubic visa or something of that. I don't know how I don't know how it's put with this. Uh, but that's going to be beyond what we're working with today. So you, most of the time you are going to use either ease or easing out. Yeah. Uh, but I think most I think most people love easing out. Easy, that's kind of looks. I think most of the time you're going to find yourself using ease or easy in for your animations. The next animation property I would like to talk about is animation delay. Animation delay. So if you don't want your animation to start immediately, if you want to pause it for for some seconds before the animation will start, this is where we use animation delay. This is where we use animation to be. So, um, so I can put two s, which means two seconds, and let's say three. So that so it's much more obvious. If I save and I start and I go back to refresh, one, two, three, see, then the the animation starts. So that's for animation delay. The next one I would like to talk about is called animation fill mode. Animation fill mode. So you may be wondering what's this about. Now if you've noticed whenever our animation ends it goes back to what was here like the, the CSS properties that was here. Like it doesn't retain any of the CSS properties we set here and that may not be the case. That may not be what you want. You may want it to have the properties that was here, but based on what we've learned so far, we've seen that it just goes back to the properties that we set here, which means that there is no degree, there's no background color, whatnot. It's just blank. Now, if we want it to retain, what we could do is we would say animation, fill mode, and there is none, so it will not apply anymore. But what we want to use in this particular situation is forwards. So what does forwards mean? Forwards mean that when the animation ends, it will retain the CSS properties in this two side, this part, this last part. Anything in the last keyframe, which is this part, obviously, it's going to, oops, it's going to retain, it's going to retain the CSS properties there. That's what's going to happen. So now, if we save, um, so we just still do alternate reverse. Let me make this okay. Fine. Um, let's make this one. So refresh. Okay, that shouldn't be one. <laughs> okay. Oh, the animation delay is still active. Uh, 
then it's okay so let me remove the animation delay i just commented that out um if you want to comment that out easily like i did you go to comment and forward slash that's if you're using mac i think so let's do that again so you could see it retained the last css property oh it's an alternate reverse sorry uh let me comment this one out too it's supposed to stop our grid that's what i'm trying to achieve okay yeah so you could see it retained this so you see it will depend on the animation direction so if your animation direction is obviously starts with reverse it will what if it stops with this one it's it, it, sorry if it's reverse obviously then it will retain this from if it is normal like we've seen it's going to be this one it's going to end with so depending on the animation direction that's what it's going to end with so yeah that's what it's going to retain so now let's let's imagine this is 20 degree or 20 is it 20, 20 degrees okay so you can see it stops at this so that's what i'm trying to point out now you may decide that okay you don't want it there's another one called backwards so what backwards would do is that during the animation if there's an animation delay it's going to show the styling for the first frame which is this one So let's bring in a delay. So normally, if you see normal, okay, let's let's just imagine. Let me comment this one out and this one out. So you see, when your animation starts, let me give, let me bring in a delay first. Let's bring a delay. Okay, now. So you see, in the delay period, you can see it's it's blank. There is no color there. There is absolutely no color there in the, when it's being delayed. When I gave it a, an animation delay, there was absolutely no color there. Now, you may want a situation that you want this this CSS properties in the first frame, which is which is this part in the first keyframe, to be applied. That is when we bring in backwards. So, if we refresh, you can see now the aqua is there. Then the animation starts. I, I don't think most of us will be using backwards. I think most of us will be using forwards, but it's there. Now, if you want to apply both properties, you want it to use forwards and backwards, all you simply have to do is save both. Just put both there. So what this would mean is that when there is a delay, the animation property, the the css properties in from will be applied and when the animation ends this would also be left behind this would also be there so it's going to be 20 degrees and it's also going to be red rather than returning back to um being clean and ordinary okay, so let's see that so you see forward is up is being applied now backwards is being applied that's what both means all right so far we've had a we've been doing a very very simple animation but you may want it to be much more dramatic in what you are doing you may want it to be you know much more crazy you know much more dramatic and you could add more um, css properties so for example um we can decide that we want to move it to the left or right. So let's say I give this a position relative, all right? Then in the beginning, I want it to be left um, zero pixels. Then in the end, I want it to be left um, 500 pixels. And then I save. Is it left? No. Yeah, left. So if I refresh, oh, I need to, oh, I should have removed the delay. So you can see that's how it's moving. But let me remove the delay. 
and let me make it 180 degrees and instead of let's make it 300 so you can see that and let me make it faster this three seconds is so slow so maybe one uh -huh. see that's that looks really nice uh-huh so you could make it you could make it much more dramatic than we've we've been seeing like I, than i did before you know now you have much more, more things to work with however instead of using from and to we could use some percentages so when i mean percentages i mean like this so zero percent means the beginning of your of your um keyframe and 100 percent means the end so if we refresh it's kind of still looks the same now the beauty about this is that now you can specify different animation at different or di different things to happen at different points in the animation so now we said at zero percent be this right now we can see that at 50 percent we want the background color to be um let's say which one is obvious yellow right and then we want it to go downwards okay, so that's going to be top um, let's say 100 pixel here so this at when it gets to 50 percent this will be applied and to, and to go on so let's see how that looks like so let's start again. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was a bit, you know, junky. So maybe we say top um, zero pixels. And that, so that it doesn't just jump and just moves smoothly. Uh -huh. so, let's, so you can see once it's left 50%, it went back to, it went back to zero pixels. And because there was no top here, it went back to the top. So Let's do that again. See how well that was kind of fast. Let me, <laughs> I don't want it to be that fast. Uh, oops, no. Can I get two? Let me make it two seconds. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's so you could keep tweaking it. So let's see. Um, yeah, so. Hmm. We can decide to make it much more complicated by adding, let's say, at twenty percent, we would say, uh, let it go to, let's say, minus one hundred pixel to the top. Then just make it smooth, uh, much more smooth than it was before. Then we can now say, um, uh, okay, so it was this. It goes down, and then it comes back to zero pixels. That's something like that so if we refresh can you see so it's much more smooth than it was before you know before it was jumping it jumped back to zero because we didn't put top zero pixels there but now it is much much it is much more smoother than before so you can see it has that um but if you increase let's see let's just make it so that it's not so just see yeah so that I know we, I, we are not going to obviously use this for the, what I just did for anything, but it essentially is just to give you an idea of what you can use. So of what you can use to what you can animate with this. Yeah. Before we close out what we've learned so far in animation, there's one more thing I would like to show you guys. So this seems like it's too long. You know, we've been writing this like a lot of code, and there is a shortcut property, and the shortcut property is animation. So you just write animation, and the first thing you would like to write would be the animation name. So we're going to say animate. So we say angels, and then we want it to we want it to run for let's say three seconds, right? then we let's say hmm, okay so we want it to run for three seconds 
then we say we want the timing function to be ease in and then you could put a delay here by saying two seconds but we i don't want a delay so i'm just going to leave it alone but if you want a delay then to be two seconds okay so so let's see what we've gotten so far and so that you will see it so you can see there's a delay for two seconds and then our animation starts and then stops so so you can see that so you could decide to give it the number of times that you want it to run so uh you can give it the number of times you want it to run and we'll just say two and if we start, see it goes, does that, and does it again for the second time. Yeah, so it's that. And then we can see, okay, whether you want it to be, you want it to go alternately. So, so let's do, all, we say alternate. It's run two times, but to alternate. One, the second time. So it goes back. Then we can now bring in whether we want it to be forwards or backwards. So we'll just say forwards. So of course, forwards would retain the um, CSS styling at this hundred percent, which is the last two frame. And so you see, it goes. Okay, so there's that. Okay, okay. Well, okay, because it's ending here, since it is alternate, it will retain this one. So let me remove this. Let me make this one so that it will retain red instead. So, okay, let me see. Red, exactly. So, so essentially, you could shorten all that code you've written before into just this single line. And it will still work the same way. This brings us to the end of animation, and I hope you've been able to. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it, um, you learned something about animation, and you'll be able to work with much more complex animations than I just did there. Did here. This brings us to the end of animation in CSS. I hope you've been able to learn something about animation. You could try out much more complex animation, animations that we did um, in this particular tutorial today. The next thing we're going to be learning is the media query. Media query helps us to write responsive um, web websites, so make responsive websites. So um, yeah, that's what we're going to be learning next. See you in that one.